Now that we have all of the necessary building blocks, we can see exactly what the stiffness method is. This will be an example. It'll be schematic and we'll add details later. We'll consider the propped cantilever beam that we've looked at already in previous examples. It'll be subjected to a uniform load W. It'll be of length L and our goal is to find all of the member forces. Step one is to identify the degrees of freedom. We've done this already. There's only one possible way that the node can move given an axial constraint, and that is rotation of the right hand node. Now come the important steps in the procedure. The first main step identified two here is to hold all of the nodes locked. So even though the right hand node can in reality move, we start by holding it in place. That requires a certain force to hold that in place. That force is called the fixed end force that we considered previously. Here's the figure from Appendix C. This is the value QL squared over 12, which we write as WL squared over 12 here. And that's the moment that must be present at that node to keep it from rotating as we apply this uniform load W. So as I apply this load here, if I don't want that node to rotate, I need to apply a moment in that direction. Now, same as in the flexibility method, we've now introduced an error. That node has to rotate. So the goal here is to apply a moment in the other direction that's gonna counterbalance that and give us a zero moment at that node. Now that node is actually allowed to rotate. In fact, it has zero moment at it, it's a moment free node. So that moment of W squared over 12 is clearly an error. And what we need to do is apply a moment in the opposite direction that will be scaled appropriately to cancel out that error. Here's where we use the value from appendix D, which we see here at the end that's being rotated is F1, that's 4E over L, and that's the value we have here. Now we're gonna scale that by the actual unknown value of the rotation. In the flexibility method, the main unknown was a force. In the stiffness method, the main unknown is a deflection or a rotation. The main condition that we have to satisfy is given in step four, and that is equilibrium of the node. Everything must always be in equilibrium, including moments on the right-hand node. So taking from step two, the value w is squared over 12. Taking from step three, the value 4ei over l times the scaling factor theta. We can solve this for theta to get that theta is equal to w l cubed over 40 adi. We'll notice that w is a distributed load in kips per foot, say. l is a length in feet. e is a modulus in ksi. And i is a moment of inertia in inches to the fourth. All of them are presumably given in the problem. We can plug numbers in, and we can get a value for theta. So now we've used the stiffness method to find out what that deflection is. We can take this value of theta, plug it back in here, add that to the information from here, and combining all this information, we can get the resulting internal forces and reactions and other information for the indeterminate structure. We'll see next time in a much more detailed example how this all plays out.